This is GED teacher Damon Tennant here, and I want to take a screenshot from a <clears throat> a recent class that we just did on measurement of shapes. And so when you're thinking about measurement of shapes, there's all kinds of things uh, that could potentially be on the GED test. You know, you could they could give you, you know, a, a cylinder, you know, kind of like that can shape. Excuse my drawing, my, my penmanship isn't great. Um, you know, they can give you a triangle, they can give you a rectangle, you know, they can give you a square, you know, they can get, give you what's called a rectangular solid, and that's when you're really more trying to get volume. Um, but, any of, but any of these ty type, types of shapes are things uh, that you will be asked questions on, then they can even um, go into this shape right here, the cylinder, like the shape of a can, they can even ask you just the surface area. So not the volume, what's inside, but the surface area, the area around it, the top, the bottom, and the wrap around the can. So, you know, one of the things that we worked on is that when you have this triangular shape, we worked on some things when you are looking at recognition. So there's a couple things that you have to recognize about this shape to begin with. Number one, you have to recognize that, you know, it is indeed a triangle. Number two, you have to recognize that it's a, a right triangle. Um, and then number three, you have to recognize when there's a right triangle, you're using the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm just going to abbreviate that as PY. So when you look at this triangle, there's three things. Number one, it's a triangle. Number two, it's a right triangle, meaning that it has a 90 degree angle. And number three, if you want to find the sides of a right triangle, you use the Pythagorean theorem. So in this problem, uh, you know, this part was not given. We were just given uh, the base being 15, the hypotenuse or slope being 25, and then we were looking for the height of the triangle, um, and and we found that it was 20 over here. You can see the problem is already done. Again, this is a screenshot from what we did, but again, you know, our focus was, so when you're on the test, you know, it's about recognition. You know, the GED test is called the GED math reasoning test for a reason, because when you... Um, approach the questions it's not just can you do it but can you do the reasoning steps these three steps are the reasoning portion identification you know what is it number two what kind is it number three what do you use to figure out the answer and so in this case we use the pythagorean theorem because it was a triangle it was a right triangle and so pythagorean theorem would give us the lengths of the sides a squared plus b squared equals c squared so in the pythagorean triangle this side here can be A or B, this side here can be A or B, but this side is C, the hypotenuse or the slope of the right triangle is always C and only C. So this length here is always C. It's never B, it's never A, it's always C. So in this case, we had C and then this doesn't matter. This could be A or B, this could be A or B. It doesn't matter, so we just chose A. So we put 15 squared in for that, then we have B squared equals 25 squared. And squared, don't get that confused with 15 times two. It's not, it's 15 times itself. So 15 times 15. So 15 times 15 is 225. 25 times, or 25 times 25 is 625. And so, here is the step that a lot of people get stuck on because once they have this equation, because remember, you're just trying to find this height or just B down here. So you're up here with B squared. Um, you, you have to get down here. And so a lot of students were kind of struggling here, but this is the solving uh, the equation uh, step that you need to know. Um, and so what you do is your goal is to get down here to B, so you start doing the opposites to whittle it down. So 225, the opposite of that is minus 225. That gets rid of that, and because it's an equation, you also do it to this side so it remains equal. Now you get down here to B squared equals 400. So if B squared equals 400, then just plain B equals the square root of 400, because remember, squared is a number times itself. And so if B squared equals 400, then plain old b equals the square root of 400. And then the square root of 400 we found was 20. And so that's how we did that. So in our class, those are the kinds of things that we're working on. If you find this kind of thing helpful, uh, definitely subscribe here to the YouTube channel, like the video, 
Um, that helps YouTube know that it's a useful video. And then if you're really serious about passing the GED math test and if you've been struggling with pass it, then join the online GED course because, you know, you will get access to some of these live classes. And definitely if you can't make the live one, you can always get the recording of the full class. I'm just pulling out one thing here that we did in the lesson. Um, but again, this is a regular weekly thing. It's ongoing. You can text me. You can email me your questions. And this is how we make sure that you have success. We put you on a, a pretty straight up uh for math, it's a 10 lesson plan. For the whole test, it's a 13 lesson plan. And you just do one to two lessons a week. Um, some people do more, some people do less based upon uh, the kind of time that they have to dedicate to this. And there's uh, uh, touch points throughout the lessons where you take practice tests, where you go and actually take the official practice test. So you know, when you go take the test, you're going to pass because you're ready. And so that's how we prepare you. We don't fool around. We don't give you a billion and one worksheets. We just get you ready to take the test. Um, and we do that in a very methodical way. You do lesson one, you do lesson two, you do lesson three, all the way up to 10 if it's math and all the way up to 13 if it is uh, all four tests. And you just will have these touch points. You'll watch a video and you'll take a practice test and then you'll do a worksheet and then you'll see what area you're weak on and then you, you can do more work in that area uh, if you're straight good there then you go on to the next one so again it just makes it easier so you're not wasting your time um you know just surfing around or you know stuck in that big 600 page ged book or you know whatever if it's not working for you it's just not working for you so this is a way to get it to work for you again this has been ged teacher damon Tennant. Uh, for more information, you can go to mygedlive.com. Thank you.